Vespa, a sophomore from Monroe, New York, gets the call. Gary Steen has gotten the majority for Penn State at 125. But tonight it is Marco Vesta. There's Spencer Lee, the two-time Hot Trophy winner, three-time national champion, as he continues his quest for history. And Vespa with a quick shot off the whistle, Jim. And he jumps right into a cradle, and he's got Lee in a bit of trouble here, but Lee's able to break out of it there and in on a shot of his own. 16,000 fans out of their seats as Vespa gets the first takedown, and quickly, Spencer Lee with a reversal 2-2. How do you like that, Jim? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, the Nittany Lion fan base really loves it here. They're all standing, 16,000, and they appreciate the aggression there by Vespa. Set bottom, now top. Largest Set. crowd ever here inside the Bryce Jordan Center. The last time Iowa came, back in 2018, just shy of 16,000. Spencer Lee, Jim, 33 pins in his career, 27 in the first period, 10 in the first minute. What more can you add? I'll tell you what. I'm looking at the techniques that he's using here right now because this is an important match here as far as team points here in this duel. Remember these number one ranked guys are, don't have the you don't have the typical one two matchups like we've had this meet in the past. So Lee against Vespa here, heavy favorite. I look for him to start using pinning combinations. That's what he's thinking about. Not necessarily going into tilts. He might grab one here though. One, one gets thousand, the count, takes two, the lead. Thousand, three, Textbook thousand, Spencer Lee. Thousand, get on the red, legs same, and go to work on same. top with those tilts, the bars. Looking for his Same. seventh consecutive pin. Same. And that's one reason why now. Vespa may be out here. The knowledge that he might be a little bit tougher and would maybe weather this down below here, stay off his back. Pretty wiry Easy. guy. Easy. Potentially dangerous. Whistled with 144. A takedown and a turn for four. Last week in Madison, Spencer Lee Set getting green. his now sixth red. straight fall against two-time All-American Eric Barnett. It was 10-1 after the first period. Got the pin in the second period. Yeah, look at him go right for the wing, though. Right there, up there high, getting his shoulder behind it right there. He's going to come back and grab the wrist and look for the no tilt. Pressure. But let's see how he Easy. finishes this off. He gets the, one, the one count thousand. again one Two more one time. Thousand. Three, one thousand. Four, one thousand. Where, where does he go from here? Does Same. he try to go ahead and go Easy. high and look for the, uh, try to turn Same. the shoulders? Same. Same. That's exactly what he's doing. Spencer Lee. Potentially dangerous whistle again with one four to tell. Spencer Lee, a three-time national champion, one of seven in Iowa history. Of course, he'll look to become the first Hawkeye in fifth overall to capture four now red. individual crowns. J.R. Johnson, the official, he put a quick on that. I wouldn't say quick, but just a quick whistle. He's one, one thousand, technique right two, here. One thousand, tilting three, him one, thousand, one more four, time, one got the four count. What's the most important thing he does, Jim, with that pressure on top? Well, I tell you what, he just puts that all that pressure, putting those shoulders up into the ear almost, and, and now he comes back in Nothing. his grip and his, his, one, one thousand, his basically two, his one thousand, bicep grip three, right there. He can go ahead four, and just pin the guy to his body right Easy. there, and he gets it. Well, he gets the tech fall. He does not get the pin. That could be significant when it's all said and done. Spencer Lee, a tech fall of the 30th of his career. Career victory number 89 of 49 straights. And it's all Spencer Lee with the back tilts. 133 pounds, former teammates. And Brody Teske ranked 17th in the country. And Roman Bravo Young, two-time national champion for Penn State. These two towing the Resolites here in the second match in this duel. Hawkeyes leading at 5-0 after that tech ball. Here comes RBY. Spencer Lee, who has now won 49 straight. Here's Roman Bravo Young. He's right on his heels. He's won 45 straight. A lot of talent in this building tonight, Jim. I tell you what, Roman Bravo Young, I tell you what, if he's anything like uh, when it's the walk-up music, they're the heavy on the base right now. Look for him <laughs> to touch and go and get right after it. You know, his matches, have, have, uh, guys have just slowed him down a little bit, and he's just been a star, and particularly in this Iowa-Penn State duel throughout his career. RBY, a good trip last weekend to Michigan, beat Dylan Ragus in 4-2. The Wolverine got the first takedown. 
Then he pinned Rayvon Foley to improve to 9-0. And, oh. and like you mentioned, Shane, that Brody Teske was in the Penn State room for a while, and then, you know, before he transferred to UNI, then on to Iowa. But he's a guy that they, these guys have had to have squared off a number of times, so maybe used to, to measuring that quickness. And Roman Bravo Young is a fingers, highlight fingers. reel on a wrestling mat, but last couple of years when it gets right down to it, he's gotten really gritty. Yeah, we, we talked about that often here about, you know, when he first came on the scene, I'll just say this again, he, he known for the backflip there off the single leg counter from his feet, did that against the Lehigh match and everybody was oohing and on, but you know, the, the, the wrestling that he's done in the national finals against Dayton Fix, really good solid wrestling getting the quick angle, the go-behinds right there. Good job by Teske reacting to all that. No score halfway through this first period. Teske originally from Fort Dodge, Iowa. In his fifth year, as you mentioned, started at Penn State, went to UNI, was a Big 12 champion in 2021. Two-time national qualifier. You know, look, look for Teske to come hard with that right collar right there. He didn't really follow it up, but uh, coming... Nice job there, working off the two-on-one. It really doesn't have any confidence to maybe move into a shot right there. The speed of Bravo Young is just amazing here, and how he goes misdirection on guys. Makes you feel like he's going one direction. Shooting just to create action. Crowd wanted a stall call there, but that's the really, there's a follow-up shot here, and he gets it. Gets the stall call, RBI. RBI hunts it down, gets the takedown. Easy, gentlemen, and up easy. Lyon, 2 nothing. 33 ticks to go in the first. What do you feel, Jim, is the most underappreciated aspect of his wrestling? Iowa, oh, Iowa, look at me. This is top Got wrestling, and he's just he's as tough bottom. as the guys now like top. Carter Starachi and, and uh, you know, Aaron Brooks there in the top position. He can control the guy when he needs to. And if it's running a, a leg down, if it's, it's you know, staying with the guy, scooping the leg is what he's done right here. We saw the speed, we've seen the quickness and everything, but this is where the tough wrestling turns over. And this is what he's done to be able to win national championships, stay in the top position at the end of the period. And he definitely wants to try to keep Teske down here. 10 seconds away from doing that, there's another one, trip. 1,000, 2, 1,000, three the one. down. Makes the adjustments. One, one, Two nothing to the second period. There's Micah Parsons. Red, top bottom standing. First first. round pick a couple of years ago for the Dallas Cowboys. One Red, of the best of the down. game and all-time greats here at Penn State. And now one of the all-time greats in the NFL. Great to see him here inside Bryce George. Yeah, he Red, doesn't look comfortable down. there, does he? You know, he's just, just <laughs> this wrestling is, is getting to him here. You can just tell he's, he's grinding inside. Teske starting period on bottom. Oh, there's a scoop right there, the near leg, putting a lot of pressure on Teske's head right there, has the chin, maybe looking for the cradle. Teske sensing that, you're covering the fingers underneath. Roman Bravo Young with that first period takedown, now in duel, 61 takedown scored. He's given up two, but he's also very good on top, as you alluded to, Jim. Five times, he's accumulated a riding time point, and he's got riding time over 60 seconds here in the second period. Coming back to that, uh, you know, head fulcrum right there, getting the, the head. You called it a coffee grinder last week, and everybody from Ohio wanted to know what you're talking about. <laughs> One, it's a coffee neutral. grinder. That's what we call it in Wisconsin. Teske with an escape. He's on the board with that tally, 2-1 score. A couple of four-time state champions in high school. Teske for Iowa. Roman Bravo Young from Arizona, Sunnyside High School. Both athletes pretty square on right now. Fingers, get out of them. That was a big recruiting class for Penn State. There you get a look at those notable recruits. Of course, Michael Beard is now at Lehigh, and Brooks Bravo Young, and Brody Teske was part of that class before heading to UNI. I'd say that class had worked out pretty well. <laughs> Seth Nevels was in that class as well for Penn State. Short time, 25 seconds here in the second period. Teske's been able to slow this match down. He really has. He's done a nice job here. I know the crowd has got on the official J.R. Johnson a little bit, but, you know, uh, it really has to be followed up here. The guy who's going to get the stalling call is R.B. White. He can drop in and get shots like that. It's a double leg. Second takedown of the match. It comes in short 1, 1, time. 
two and those takedowns inside 10 15 seconds and then another period finished on top Take look, look at this power gym. Look at this drop down here. It gets all the way through. It looks how active the lower body gets. He just gets a little bit better angle and drives across here, catches Teske and drops him on his rear. We're neutral here to begin third period. You know, so many times guys get on shots and there's no activity with the lower body. You can see where he got another quick little angle there and was able to drive through and get the shot. Spencer Lee, a tech fall at 125. RBY and the Nittany Lions looking to answer here at 133. And of course, in a dual meet, Jim, if you're Teske, wow. you want to keep this to a regular decision, but it's going to be tough to stop that. Great job of clearing out of that tie by Teske here and diving back in on that right ankle, all right, with Teske here with the leg band on it right there with the red leg band. Coming back and finishing, that was a thing of beauty. Not only was he quick and we always admired his quickness here, but the angle he was able to attack from just fantastic. Now a duck to the other side. Teske's been hit for stalling once. And I see him staying right there in the middle. I, I know he hasn't been very active, but it's pretty hard to chase this RBY down. He would like to see if he's got a good shot right there. If he can go ahead, test himself, test himself, get the shot. Morning, Ryan. And there's the second stall call of points. Green to the Nittany Lion. That was earned by Roman Bravo Young right there. Just the aggression, staying in the middle. So now it's seven to two. And now riding time is locked up, so he's up by six. So they take down and a ride out to get the major decision. He's really stalking hard right now. Teske on a shot. You're right into the quickness of Bravo Young. He's able to go ahead and lock up the cradle. be trouble. Bartlett coming down from 149. Of course, 141 was occupied by two-time national champion Nick Lee. Looking forward to this one. First time these two have met in their careers. Here we go at 141 with Woods and Bartlett. Quickly in with an attack, but countered by the Nittany Lion. And here's you see the explosiveness of Real Woods. He's able to drop into a headlock there. Now comes back into Wizard. Great job of rolling through by both guys. Single leg. Here still for on, Woods gentlemen. on the edge. You're still on. Right now, you Bloody can get sense that Bartlett is trying to get off the mat right now. You don't want to sacrifice the position. There he does a great job of squaring up his hips on Woods. How about this first 20 seconds? Guys have come to scrap tonight. Exactly what you'd expect in a one versus two showdown. Woods coming from Stanford, where he was a two-time All-American, won a couple of Pac-12 titles. And Woods is really coming hard at that right leg of Bartlett. He's, you know, that last shot right there, he got Bartlett to react more than anything. He put his hand down, didn't go really go for the leg. The first shot he did, right there. He get to, got to it again. He's got his head in good position here. Bartlett comes back over the top. Right there, he's getting sit to his rear end a little bit. Scooping the leg is real Woods in this situation. See how he's got that, his right leg is using the scoop. Now Bartlett getting out of it. How did he get out of that? We've seen him do some crazy stuff on a wrestling mat. Great athleticism as he continues to fight the single leg from the Hawkeye Woods. Yeah, he's, a, he's looking to come back in. Now Woods has shelved that leg Nothing. on his right Don't thigh. He's come to Gable, come Don't up to his feet. He's on the outside of the leg, and two, he'll get the two. Boy, that was persistent. One, 1, And with that pin Two, from RBY at 133, you said it, Jim, the Hawkeyes need to answer. This is it. This is the match, and Woods comes out here and, and really does a nice job, gets on the right-hand side. Good controlling ride. And we've seen from Woods the last couple of matches, he's a quick starter, but he slows down a little bit. Well, he does, but, it, you know, it, it just right now, this is a, a real testing match here for Woods. To be in this environment, from 16,000 people on, who do not want to see you do well and against a talented athlete. And right now it's up to Bartlett to try to answer this head lever situation. Good ride on the right hand side, totally committed. Look at all weight, that weight he's putting on there. Good tight waist ride, Come getting down there low, attacking with that head lever slash coffee grinder, Ohio. Riding time coming up on one minute. 40 seconds here in this first period. This would be huge for Woods 
If he finishes this period on top, keeps a 2-0 lead to the second period. He's got that near ankle scooped up. Cross good. wrist. Yeah, good cross wrist ride. I like what he did right there. He's sagging on it. Now right now he's coming back to that head lever position. Good solid tight waist allows him to do that. Right now, if you're, you're Bartlett, you want to try to get a little bit of elevation. Maybe sneak a whizzer in here. If you can go ahead and do that. Final seconds here in this first period. Work to improve, gentlemen. Work to improve. Woods Both leads it to nothing. But some good action early on off the whistle. I tell you what, you saw Real Woods get right after that shot right away. Look at they, they drive in here, headlock attempt, and look at the athletic ability of Bartlett. And you see James Franklin, the head football coach at Penn State. You don't see that every day between the sidelines. <laughs> Big fan of Cale Sanderson and Penn State wrestling. So now Bartlett going on bottom. Riding time, he's had 140. Here's coach James Franklin, big Rose Bowl victory for his Nittany Lions. And a good breakdown off the whistle. But good work for Bartlett to get that escape. Yeah, that was the explosion that we're talking about that he needed. Now, in this situation, we'll see if he gets back on his offense. And he's the type of guy that likes to blow right through you from space. I mean, this hand on the head that Woods is going to go ahead and put out there. Woods is kind of keeping him away, measuring him, maybe to make him shoot from a little bit further out than what he's used to. Woods a sixth place finish at the national tournament last March in Detroit. Bartlett was one and two following a seventh place finish at Big Tens. Again, that was up at 149. We're 2 1, 115 here in this second period. Collar tie right side from Woods. And this is where we've seen where Woods is able to go ahead and shut it down a little bit. You know, he's not really looking for a shot Easy. all that much. We'll see if he changes his mind. Head position, but he's so tough to get through his head hands defense and he moves his feet real well and he can go ahead and walk into you in the tie up but keep his balance. Right there, see how walk, he walks in to, to, to uh, Bartlett but keeping his balance. Staying center of the mat right on that Nittany Lion logo. Yeah, precious time, you know, move ticking away here for Bartlett. He's something that he has to do is maybe increase the pace of this match here, get an attack off. What does he see? Again, the, the left leg league by uh, Real Woods may be bothering him a little bit. Goes to a two on one. Work through it, gentlemen. A lot of options. Work through it. All these Work ties are it. to Woods' advantage here. Just, he can feel everything that Bartlett's going to do with that ear to ear position. 14 seconds off this restart. Woods will have choice in the third as the seconds tick away in this second period is in the book. We'll go ahead and take the bottom position. Woods pops to his feet. Right now, you kind of got a decision to make here. You can really stay committed to the ride. You haven't had much success on your feet, not even basically an attempt on the feet. But Bartlett lets him go, so he's got to go ahead and get more than just one takedown in this match here, given the fact that he's given up so much riding time. Into a chest lock position. The important thing here for Woods is he's keeping that See how he's got his hands up on the chin right there, pulling that chin down, that right hand right there with the tape job right there, pulling on that chin, sagging back. And right now, Woods is the guy who's at least a half head lower in the stance, right? Dropping on his stance, posting on his hands, right there, posting on his hands, staying low, measuring himself, measuring the height of his stance. You get into these third periods, Shane, sometimes you get out of your stance pretty easily. Fundamentals so critical, especially when you're fatigued. 60 seconds left, Woods up by a pair. There's a shot from Bartlett, but again, that good defense, very quick from Real Woods. And that's with your Bartlett, you've got to start mixing that up. You've got to bring a couple of these things to the party. Both guys undefeated this season. Riding time, getting close to being locked here in this situation. So Bartlett does get a takedown. He's going to need another escape. And 
get an escape and to take him down, but you see that the poise of Real Woods in these situations here, ear to ear, even with his head stuffed right there, he's doing a great job of controlling the arm from the elbow down. So now with 27 seconds left, riding time is secured. If you're Bartlett, you gotta go something big. You do. But, you know, shoot into something big. Shoot and come up, shoot and come up, all right? Nice job of Woods reacting to it. Again, Woods, good job maintaining territory. Final 10 seconds. Harlan looking for something big. Just a workmanlike performance from a real Woods with their riding time point 4-1. The Hawkeyes victorious at 141 pounds. Excellent job of holding the lead there for real Woods here. The Bart, you knew Bartlett was going to come at him. Everybody knew in the arena that it was going to happen, but he stayed low and controlled the tie from the elbow down. Took away his lead arm on the shot. Well done. Three national champions coming up for Penn State. It's Carter Storacci, undefeated at 10-0. Nelson Brands, 4 and 3, ranked 16th in the nation. Two time and national champion, Carter Storacci. The Lions, a junior from Erie, Pennsylvania, Carter. lead at 14 to 9. There's Nelson Brand you know. He anticipates a battle with Carter Storacci. How about that walkout song? It, it, it's not a song, it's a warning. It's a beat. It's a warning. <laughs> it's Good a warning. Way to put it. Bad weather. <laughs> See the bonus points? Roman Bravo Young getting a fall at 133. Carter Storacci has won 38 straights. Two-time national champion. And with Carter Storacci, Jim, you know where he lives because the door has a sign on it that says, beware of dog. He's got some dog in him. Yeah, he really does. The, the dog is large in this one. Had an opportunity to talk to him, meet his dad here, leaning over the thing. and. Big fans of the broadcast and everything, and it, it, it takes me back to that first match that we did with him when he was going against Logan Massa. Massa was favored in the match, but didn't know that much about Stracci, and all of a sudden, this freshman is just staying in the match, you know, staying in the match. And all of a sudden, you just got a sense of the competitor that he was, and I think he's he's got to be one of the most competitive guys I've seen in 40 years. He just loves to be in those tough positions. He's comfortable being uncomfortable. But Nelson Brands, Jim, he's a guy going to maintain good position, very tough to score on. He's not a guy that gives up bonus points. We had that match last Friday against Mikey Labriola, second ranked in the country, and he wrestled him tough to a 3-2 decision. Hey, if you go out there feeling bad against uh, uh, Nelson Brands, he's going to light you up, right? But it, it takes a while for him to get that confidence that he can go ahead and get to his offense. So you've got to be feeling good to, to put up a lot of points on Brands. A lot of heavy collar ties type stuff, and this is Strachi doesn't mind being here. You've mentioned it before, it's when the match gets tough, this guy really enjoys it. He does. Think about that national final last March against Makai Lewis, six to five in the first tiebreaker. Year previous over Michael Kemmer, three one in sudden victory to win the national crown that couple weeks after losing to Kemmer in the Big Ten final. Shot here from Storacci, but Brands, solid defense, squares up, back to his feet. It's right back into a collar snap there for Brands after the shot. Now this is a control tie situation here for Storacci. Does he follow it up with any... These guys are really working each other's collars hard. The 
There's another shot there by Stracci. Looking for the crowd to get into this and buy him a stall warning at least. 0-0, zero, zero, 10 seconds in the first period. Carter Storacci on his feet, our State Farm a state of success in dual meets. He has yet to allow a takedown. He has scored 59 himself. Not a bad ratio, Jim. You can win with that kind of ratio. <laughs> Shane, you could coach that guy. <laughs> Good mat return, a nice job of popping back up. Here, knees up close to the chest. Coming across here, Brands battling here. He brings his hips in. Storacci comes back and makes the quick turn. In. There's an escape on the board for Storacci, the 2021 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Now, he didn't get a stall warning on that one, but I'm gonna put that one on the crowd. You know, before, you know, they just didn't get enough, didn't enough energy in this building here to do uh, by Stracci that first stall warning set there because he t attacked probably three, four times and didn't get anything out of it. You see some of that footwork from Stracci, him and Roman Bravo Young, a lot of time spent with footwork. Move your hands, move your feet. Slow feet don't eat. From Roman Bravo Young, I've heard that before. Stracci quick with the feet as well. Here they come. But Brands Jim doing a nice job. He's moving forward, keeping territory at the moment anyways. He's presenting himself, kind of, you know, but, but he hasn't backed up one step of the way. He's beating Stracci to the inside ties there, particularly with the left arm. Now coming over the top with a collar, straight on double leg. No stall calls on Brands. Been able to neutralize the offense of Storacci on his feet. You knew Nelson Brands was going to come to battle, Jim. We knew that. And he's doing more than just that. He's battling. He's, he's starting to look for maybe his shot as well. 13 seconds, not left time. Much time. Now he gets the stall warning, but that may come into play later in the match with the. Uh, Russian and Storacci, but again, like you said, Nelson Brands has presented himself. All the wrestling in this period seems like it's been right in the logo. One point match to the third. Now Brands will go on bottom. And Storacci especially tough in this top position. Brands not bad in the bottom position. I think that if there is an advantage here for Storacci, he rides on the right-hand side. Right there, see how he just widens the legs of the table there with that leg scoop. Wouldn't be surprised if he reaches down and hits that ankle pick. Chopping hard. Good job of Branza turning into that, that technique. But again, this is a, a, a position that he has a little bit more difficult time in when you're riding on the right-hand side. See what type of adjustments he's making with Starachi. Some sort of changeover, maybe to get Strachi on the other side. Use your knee. Keep working. Keep working. Riding time at 30 seconds for Strachi. Yeah, right there, attack the far leg. Come hard with that chop. If you can't chop it, push it away. But the reason why we're this far into this here is that Nelson Brandt's doing a nice job of keeping his chest up, wrinkle in the back of his neck. Brands trying to work up. I was giving up that wrist ride, but nope, oh, just a cross wrist ride right there. Goes over one minute of riding time. Brands to his feet. Storacci stays right with him and out of bounds. This match reminds me a little bit, Jim, of Storacci's match at the NWC All-Star Classic number in, number in November down in Austin, Texas. Yes, sir. He beat Mikhail Lewis 2-0, got the escape in the seconds, wrote on the entire third period for the 2-0 victory. Credit Brands, 1-1, 25 seconds. I mean, he's in position, Jim. He's opportunity to steal one right now. Can he go ahead and dive in and get some penetration on a shot? He likes to go ahead and 
Ross. Fauci has not been called for stalling, but he's basically backpedaling here pretty hard right now. Less than 10 seconds of the match. No penetration by France. He's doing a great job of chasing. Here's the shot. Second period escape. And right in time. Carter Storacci victorious. Jacob Warner, four-time All-American for the Hawkeyes. These two guys, Jim, have done a lot of winning over the years. Yeah, they, they, they've, uh, of course, Max Dean, the NCAA runner-up and last year's NCAA champion. He seems to guy, be the guy that's had the magic in the, in the tournament. And Warner, you, know, you just never know about this guy. You know, he does have the skills in the top position. He can keep it close. He's got good defense, but I see something in his eyes here today, at least early part of this match. He seems riled up, you know, ready to go. I think we're going to see the best that he has to offer here today. And Max Dean, you know, he's like Russell in that old coach. He has all the tricks. He's got all the angles. He's got good, you know, shots, good finishes. He takes you to your back. Well, that dual meet last year inside Carver Hawkeye Arena with that duel hanging in the balance. He was down 3 0 going to the third period. Warner was beginning period on top where he's very strong. An escape, a takedown, and then, of course, that excruciating bow and arrow. I mean, we felt that when Matt side last January gets the four point turn and gets the 8 3 decision, scoring eight unanswered. Heavy hands, fast beat. Did the lap match last year in the NCAA Finals, and that was just a, a battle, just like what we're seeing right here. Guys going hard on the collar ties. We've seen this all match here, all meet with the, the different weight classes. Dean slips, slips in on the leg there, fought off pretty well. He pummeled back in with that right arm over the top of that thunderhook. Dean from Lowell, Michigan. But you mentioned, Jim, that runner-up finish in 2019. That was down at 184, wrestling for Cornell at the time before coming to State College. Yeah, but going back to that national finals match last year, it just appeared that Warner had it going his way as far as keeping the match close, given the fact what happened in the duel with all the scoring at the end. And it just took that one shot from, you know, went across the body. And, and maybe it would be advised to get into the tiebreaker situation where he's pretty good in the top position himself. But uh, Dean able to do just a quick go behind and won the national title. That was a 3-2 final in Detroit. Dean beating Eric Schultz of Nebraska in Lincoln to win the Big Ten title. 40 seconds for 0-0. Look at it, Dean here. It looks like he's measuring. Trying to get a shot off. Still plenty of time. Looks like he's looking to get free. So many of those Penn State wrestlers, when they get, when they try to break free, they not only break free, but they also try to create a quick little angle. They shuffle their feet, they drop their level. It's not just, you know, getting out or, or, you know, it's not committed to getting out. It's just also creating another angle where they can go ahead and maybe get, a, get an attack in. Warner and Dean, a scoreless first. I believe we got some blood on Jacob Warner. A couple legends in Roman Bravo Young on your left. Three-time national champion, Bo Nickel. I believe Bo's got a fight coming up in March. And I'm telling you right now, Jim, when it's all said and done, Bo Nickel going to be an all-time great. I'm telling you. Well, he's... Uh... Anybody that gets inside that eight-sided chain link fence has uh, got a special kind of toughness in my book. I think his future is going to be phenomenal inside that cage. Jacob Warner getting the head wrapped. I think we saw that, Jim, last Friday night inside Carver Hawkeye against right. Nebraska. Anytime you see that head wrap, of course, you think about Dan Gable, John Reeder, Jordan Burroughs. Gable standing atop that podium as an Olympic champion in Munich. 
Here we go. Dean going on bottom. Remember what he did in this situation last year, albeit in the third period in this duel. Important sequence here for Warner just to buy himself a little bit of time here. A lot of forward pressure trying to keep Dean on his hands, looking to get that uh, that tricep there, that left tricep. Now he knocks him off that base a couple times, coming all the You're way over on. with the claw ride. You're still on, gentlemen. You're off. Good sequence there for Warner and stopping the first moves of Dean. Jacob Warner at the national tournament, seventh in 2019, fourth in 2021, and of course second on the podium to Dean last March. See what happens off the whistle here again. Dean trying to work up. Good pressure. Good scoop there right there on the near side. See how he's spreading that out. Nice job of Dean limping out of it. Beautiful little changeover. See how with that action, he's able to get him over on the other side of his body. Warner would prefer to be on that side. Good job of keeping Girl, balance. Easy, gentlemen, easy. And just like Bring that, Jim, 39 seconds of riding time. We talk about it a lot. Keep inside. 10, 15 Side second goes. Set bottom, now top. Kale Sanderson looks on. Penn State has won 38 straight duels. The Hawkeyes have won 15 straights. Uh, reversal situation, but actually, actually Dean came out of it there, but good job. I love that, what he just did right there. Back pressure brought his knees up to his chest. Worst the issue there gets the escape. Warner fortunate that he did not give up a reversal. And Dean does not allow that riding time to get to a minute. One nothing match, 50 seconds here in the second. 17-14. Penn State leading Iowa. Each team has won four matches. You know, Warner took a little gamble from the top position to decided to go ahead and you know come you know suck him back into a crab right there, but just beautiful counter that action, rolling with it, kind of putting himself in an egg-like position where he brought his knees up to his chest and rolled out of that. Good work. Dean and Warren are wrestling neutral late in the second period. Only score. Second period escape by the Nittany Lion. Okay, Warner taking the bottom position, and we've seen where, where Dean has been dominant when he wants to be in the top position, particularly against in these matches. Match that really stands out. We did last year against Patrick Brucky of Michigan. He was able to ride him and eventually beat him. Yeah, what he does is as good as anybody in the country. He makes the guy carry his weight, and then he follows back around. Warner able to come up to his feet. It's up to a double leg, and he doesn't want to, you know, allow Dean to finish that because he doesn't want to end up being in the Turk position. But he scoops that near leg. Just tough wrestling there for Max Dean. He's like a 200-pound bag of rocks <laughs> that you put on the side of your body right there, and it's just tough to keep your balance. Breaks him down. Warner working hard, but you know what you got to do? You got to put that left hip down and lift that left leg out of that position. And you allow him to scoop that up, get to that bow and arrow. So now Dean has erased all of Warner's riding time. He's working on his own. Foul. If he rides him, he beats him 2 nothing. And there's a stole call on Warner. Yeah, that was just, it was just a, a position call. And again, crowd got active. They deserve that call. But if you're Warner here, Jim, what do you do? Well, you don't, you know, when I say deserve that call, the crowd got what they wanted. But, you know, Warner has an opportunity once that leg is hip out, is locked like that, to drop his hips and, and put a little back pressure back into him and make a big turn. What are you watching for in the first five seconds off the whistle? I'm looking for some chance, have a changeover action. There you go, that's a little bit of action right there. Covers the fingers right there. Great job by Dean, locking in the crotch, and then not only just locking right there, but keeping his chest sealed to it. And they go off the mat. Dean maintains control. Warner was close. He did a great job of dropping back in. The turn was made. Dean hugged that leg, got his chest sealed to it. Watch that riding time at 37 seconds. 
right here, he went right back to probably a little bit early right there. Can Warner go ahead and put a little back pressure into him, get pressure back and make the turn? It's kind of when you turn is important. Now he's given up a wrist ride. Listen to this crowd. They understand the situation. Max Dean. Look at his footwork. Takes riding time over a minute, and it's getting loud. Just watching Max Dean's feet move when he's in the top position is the thing of beauty. Max Dean rides one of the entire third period. Two nothing. Tony Cassiope undefeated at 16 and 0, ranked third in the country. Cassiope with 10 pins on the season, and now ranked second in the country with a record of 8 and 1. Greg Kirkley for Penn State. And for your Nitty Lions, a junior from Inner Grove Heights, Minnesota. Just tonight, Jim Penny, guys would not wrestle each other in college. These guys know each other well. Officially, Cassiope's 3-0, but they did wrestle in November down in Austin, Texas. NWCA All-Star Classic that does not count, but it does count between the ears. Kirkfleet beat him with three takedowns and rode him. Yeah, that was pretty significant, and Kirk Fleet's not the same wrestler that, that started this rivalry off here with his size. I so, saw him start to come along the latter part of the season last year. I've been impressed with Cassiope's movement. This will be a fun one. And last year in this duel, I think it was so at seven to two score with Cassiope, a pretty decent uh, size win. But we saw the uh, the match they had in the semis of the Big Ten Championships, which is crazy. The, the, the end of uh, edge of the match wrestling that happened right there in the last 30 seconds, it was like an unbelievable sequence. Yeah, Cassiope got the reversal, and in doing so, erased riding time, sent it to sudden victory, scored a takedown, I believe 20 seconds in to get the win. I would down by six. If Cassiope gets a pin, the first criteria, total falls, it'd be one each. And then it would go to total match points. And Iowa with 38, Penn State with 34. Jim, Cassiope gets a pin. That, my friend, is how legends are made. Yeah, that would be a legendary move here in this environment. But, you know, you get put out there in this situation, you're thinking about just moving the big man. You know, just how can I get the quick angle? And, and one thing about Cassiope, we've learned he can okay, attack both sides. And the beautiful thing about Greg Kirkley is he gets below the knee. When he attacks, he can get below that knee, even with a guy with great footwork like Cass Cassiope. So he's, that's where he's looking. He's looking to go attack below the knee. Here's a right single there. leg from Kirkley, and a tree top that's out. And down they go into the resume, 2-0 for Kirkley. Did you see how he dropped and kept the circle going there? That's just like, that was just artful. That one shook me out of my seat. That is some force. Kirkley leading at 55 seconds in the first. Solid job in the top position. Cassiope getting to his feet, gets the quick escape. He's on the board, 2-1. Kirkley fourth at the national tournament last March. Cassiope seventh. All Americans colliding here at heavyweights. The We Are Chance here inside the Bryce Jordan Center. Indoor attendance record tonight. Yeah, look at look at what uh, Kirk Fleet's doing here with his wrist. Okay, 
he doesn't really allow himself to get tied up very much. A guy with a good grip, right? You always like to have those heavyweights with good grips. We'll take a look at the shot that Kirk Lee was able to hit right here. Going to his left, gets at the knee. Look at his, how active his lower body is right there. Slides down below the knee, puts that chest, puts that leg up to the chest and sweeps the leg. Look at the Iowa bench there. They know what that means. Switching sides, early second period. Harassing the far wrist, and when he does it, now he comes back to a two-on-one. Buying a little time. Riding time over 40 seconds for Kirkley. Nice job of settling back right there by Kirk Lee. Just again, buying some dime, trying to keep Cassie open in his hands. When he feels that pressure come back, they'll try to do something like that. Attack the far knee, nice the far ankle. ankle. Pick. Yeah, far ankle right there. But you see how he set that up? He put all that weight on his hands, right? And then when Cassio became strong back, he dropped into the far ankle. Work through it, gentlemen. In lever position, it. riding time over a minute. Workman-like up to this point for Kirkley, the number two ranked on, heavyweight in the country. And again, I just saw this at the end of the third, that last 30 seconds. Kirkley's Center. grip is amazing. And the other thing, too, about his grip is he doesn't on, allow his hands to get through. tied up very much either. He just rolls out of that the correct way. His hands are so important to his wrestling. Set, now Kirk green. Lee suffering his first loss of the season last Friday night. 3-1 to Mason Paris. Again, that far ankle pick right there. Now drives to the far ankle and knocks him down. Not known so much as a leg rider, but look at all the, there's no weight on his knees hardly at all. Right there, he's putting a lot of his torso, he his through chest it. over the top of those hips and it's attacking those wrists. He's just blanketed over Cassiope. Yeah, this is, the, you know, the same type of thing that you saw from Max Dean, what he's able to do, just make himself heavy. Two minutes of riding time. And he's at Cassiope, Jim, flat. Yeah, and Cassiope does a nice job. I've seen him drilling this in the room the other day here, trying to hit stand-ups from his belly. Gets down in this position, but only able to do enough to get up to his knees. Now that head lever back in that position, good breakdown, a huge period for Kirkwood. Rides the Hawkeye the entire two minutes. I mean, Jim, that takes a ton out of you physically and mentally. Yeah, like, like I'm saying, and this is a great looking athlete, but you know, part of athletic ability is your strength and the grip. I would love to know what his grip pressure is. The metric they used to, you know, the Cassiope looking back over, he's gonna go ahead and allow the one point escape, so they're gonna go to their feet. Iowa down by six. A Cassiope pin wins it for Iowa. Left hand They'd win it, it yep. on match points. They're up by four, 38 to 34. You know, this is what John Smith talks about being grabby. Watch the hands of Kurt Lee and how he's able to tie up the wrist of Cassiope. Right there. In, in this position, he's thinking about keeping his own balance. And if you're Tony Cassiope, if you can go ahead and drive in, get to a body lock, see how that, that grip right there, Cassiope trying to free his hand, can't get out of it. There's a shot straight on, no setup. Riding time locked up, so Cassiope's down by three. Once again, getting his grip wrist controlled. You can't do anything if you're gonna allow your wrist to get controlled. He's waving it around, trying to get out of it. Kirkley just maintaining good position. Again, catching Cassiope, reaching. That, look at that left hand of Cassiope. He's constantly getting tied up with the wrist tie. It allows you to go ahead and keep your own balance, not leaning into your opponent. Again, control the man. When you're holding a lead, control the man from the elbow down to his wrist. Stay on the mat. Underhook on the right side. So look Cassiope at, trying to set something up. Yeah, but look at the left wrist of Cass, or, uh, Kirkfleet. He's got the right wrist of Cassiope all tied up. Doesn't like it, moves on, gets it to better balance. Drifts back to the center of the mat. 
Good job of blocking shoulders. Shane, I got to make a, a, a shout out today. My niece made the state wrestling tournament in the state of Iowa here. Just started wrestling in her first year, first year of sponsored wrestling. Congratulations, Kelly Gibbons, on making it to state. <laughs> That's fantastic. And 16,000 come to their feet. 39 straight dual meet victories. Today